All right, so this is uh, graphing quadratic inequalities. Um, a blank can be written in one of the following, oh, that should be one of the following forms where A, B, and C are real numbers and A can make closer. So a quadratic inequality in two variables. can be written in one of the following forms. So here, um, I want you to notice we have three parab parabolas. We both have, they have y and x. Um, some are gonna be facing up, some are gonna be facing down. Some are solid, some are dashed, and that's really just dictated by, the solid dash is dictated by your inequality sign, and the shading is gonna depend on when we test the point, and we'll get there in a sec. Um, the graph of any such inequality consists of all, consists of all solutions, x, y of the inequality, so all of the shaded region. So the graph of quadratic inequality one of the following forms follow these steps. So graph the parabola with the equation y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Make the parabola blank for inequalities with less than or greater than, so dashed. And solid for inequalities that have an equal bar underneath that, right? So no equal bar is dashed. Uh, equal bar is solid. So you're going to test the point inside the parabola to determine whether the point is a solution of the inequality. And I'll kind of tell you what I actually do in this part, number two. Um, this part says shade the region, blank the parabola if the point from step two is a solution. So it's going to be inside because that's what it originally said there. Take a point inside the parabola. So shade the region inside the parabola if the point from step two is a solution, and you're gonna shade outside if it's not a solution. Okay. So pretty much here's how you're gonna do these. Um, I'll show you the first part. Like this one right here, I'll actually do it by hand just so you can kind of see. So really quickly, all I really need to make this graph is going to be the vertex. So let's kind of, or, yeah, the vertex. So let's kind of talk about how to get that if it's in standard form. So first we're gonna find the axis of symmetry and the formula was x equals the opposite of b over two a. So once again, a is negative one, b is negative two, and c is negative one. So the opposite of b is two divided by two times a, which is negative one. So two divided by negative two is negative one. Now, if your axis of symmetry is negative one, in terms of your vertex, that is the x value of your vertex. To find your y value, we're gonna take um, negative one and plug it into just negative x squared minus two x minus one. So negative parentheses, negative one squared minus two times negative one minus one. And we're just gonna simply just type that into our calculator. Verify that it's right. Negative one squared minus two times negative one. This one, and we get zero. So here we get zero, so the y value of my vertex is zero. So we have negative one, zero. Now from here, you know that I like to use the one, three, five, seven. So that's actually what I'm gonna use. So one, three, five, seven. We always multiply by a. In this case, a is negative one. So we multiply each one by negative one. So one times negative one is negative one, three times negative one is negative three, five times negative one is negative five, and seven times negative one is negative seven. All right, so we're gonna go to our vertex, and from that we're gonna go right one, and negative one tells me to go down one. From the red point I just made, I go right one, and the next point tells me to go down three. From that red point I made, I go right one, and then negative five goes down five. One, two, three, four, five. On this side, we can do this thing, left one, down one, left one, down three, left one, down five. Okay, now after we get our points to help us to kind of see the shape of the graph, we're going to figure out whether it's solid or dashed. So we're going to look at the inequality sign right here. This sign says less than. Less than is dashed because if there was an equal bar, it would be solid, but no equal bar is dashed. So we're going to try our best to shade, shade through the, or sorry, graph through this using a shaded line. A dashed line, sorry. And there we go right there. Now, we're gonna test the point. Now, if you read the directions before, it said to test the point inside. Me, personally, I don't use the point inside. 
the point I always prefer to use is going to be the point zero zero, and the reason why is just because that makes x zero and y zero, so it really comes down to two constants, whether it's true or false. Um, the only time I cannot use zero zero is if this graph, in this case this red graph, touches or crosses through the origin, then I have to use some other number. Okay, like, like this case, I can use negative 1, negative 1. That's really my choice. I could use 1, 1, and so on. But if 0, 0 is available, we're going to use it. So let's go ahead and put a dot on 0, 0. Now, if I plug 0, 0 into this function, it, it's true. The dot is located on the outside of the parabola, so I'm going to shade everything on the outside. If I test it and it's false, then I'm going to shade everything inside because that means the inside was a solution, not the outside. Okay, so let's see how this goes. So zero, zero is our point we're testing. So y is zero is less than negative zero squared minus two times zero minus one. So we get zero is less than negative zero squared is zero, negative two times zero zero, negative one. So is zero less than negative one? That is not true. So the dot was on the outside, which is false. So we shade inside the parabola, which is the true part. And we can see right here that our solution region is falling in between these two. Um, yeah, the shaded region is in between in the, between the problem. It's inside the problem. All right, let's check out the next one. All right, for this next one here, um, what we're going to do is we're going to make it a little bit easier. Uh, this time, when we find the vertex, we're just going to put it in the calculator this time. Kind of zip through this a little bit quicker. So number one, we're going to add a graph, number two. Now for this here, um, there are inequality signs. So me personally, every time I see one, I like to type the whole thing in myself. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to delete the equal sign. You're going to select number six relation. Then you're going to type in the equation. So y, there it is, sorry. <laughs> uh, control equals to get the, the inequality symbol, so greater than or equal to x squared plus 2x minus 8. <clears throat> okay, and as you can see, it's already actually crafted for us, right? Um, so, first thing, we know the line should be solid, so I can literally just hover over this, and you can see the line is solid. The one thing I said I needed was the vertex, okay? So, to get the vertex, um, let's write this down. It's going to be menu 6 eight and two. So let's see, menu six, eight, and vertices stands for vertex two. Now notice nothing happened. What you actually have to do is you have to scroll over to the graph. You have to click on it. And once you click on it, you'll see the point that popped up right there. And that point is negative one, negative nine. So my vertex is at negative one, negative nine. So now I'm going to go to my graph over here, negative 1, negative 9, plot that point. Now I do like to make my graph, so I'm going to use 1, 3, 5, 7. So my A value is positive 1. So 1 times 1 is 1, 3 times 1 is 3, 5 times 1 is 5, and 7 times 1 is 7. So write 1 up 1, write 1 up positive 3, write 1 up 5, and then write 1 up 7. And so left, we do the same thing, right? One up, left one up one, left one for that point up three, up five, up seven. Now, equal bar means the sign is line is solid. And here, um, we could have tested the point zero zero, and I'm going to do that just to kind of show you. So you take the point zero zero, we plug it in. So 0 is greater than or equal to 0 squared plus 2 times 0 minus 8. So is 0 greater than or equal to negative 8? That is true. And that makes sense because our shading in the original graph was inside. And this is true, so we do shade inside the problem. So you can see the calculator truly does make this process a, little, uh, a lot quicker, actually. All right, so for this one here, uh, number 2, we're just going to strip type it into the calculator. So I'm going to go open up a new graph. I never try to undo them. I just press the home button, number one, open up a new graph, don't save it. Add a calculator, or sorry, add a graph. So y control equals is less than 
negative x squared plus 2x plus 4. Oops, a syntax error. So I forgot to delete the equal sign. Let's try it again. Number 6. So y control equal is less than negative x squared oops, plus 2x plus 4. All right, so this I don't really like being in the way, so I'm just going to grab it and move it out of the way. All right, so from here, uh, let's find the vertex. If you look up here, it's menu 682. You're probably asking, oh, why didn't it pop up? Well, you have to actually go to the graph, click on it, and it pops up. So my vertex is 1, 5. All right, once you get the 1, 5, now we're going to do 1, 3, 5, 7. You can see A is negative 1. So I'm going to each one by negative 1. Uh, 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Negative 5. Negative 7. So let's go ahead and plot our vertex at 1, 5. 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. For my first point, negative 1, when I go right, 1 tells me to go down. Then negative 3 tells me to go down 3 when I go right. And then down 5. And then just fill in the other side as well. Once you get here, you have to decide whether the line is solid or dashed. So refer to your notes. Um, there's no equal bar here, so it's going to be dashed. And honestly, uh, you could have just looked at the calculator on this one to see it. So right here, you can see I hovered over it. It's dashed. And where is the shading? It's inside. Could you have used 0, 0 to verify this? Yeah, of course you could have. If you would have used 0, 0, you would have got the same answer pretty much. <clears throat> All right, we're down to the last problem here. It says graphing a system of quadratic inequalities. So pretty much what you're actually doing is you're just graphing two of these parabolas. Um, so for the first one, I'll do it in red. I'm just going to type it in and get the vertex and make the graph. So delete the equal sign, pick number six. Y control, oops, control equals is less than negative x squared plus 3. So let's find a vertex menu 682. Let's click on the graph and we see the vertex is at 0, 3. And A is 1357. We see A is negative 1. So negative 1, negative 3, negative 5. This is actually negative 1, so it's negative 7. So from this point, right one, down one, right one, down three, down two, three, four, five, on the other side, apply those other points. There was no equal bar, so they're dashed. And again, I could have just looked at the calculator, but I'm also still trying to do it by hand. Here we can see the shading is inside. You could test the point, but we're going to shade inside here. All right, for the next one. We'll do this one in purple. So again, we're going to type it straight to the calculator. I don't like to do them together just because uh, sometimes the calculator gets confused and doesn't know which one you're looking for. Maybe the calculator is updated, but I'm not sure. Or at least so from previous calculators. So first, we're going to delete the equal sign and select number 6. We're going to type in the equation. Y is greater than or equal to x squared plus 2x minus 3. So let's verify that. Greater than or equal to x squared plus 2x minus 3. We press enter. And we need the vertex menu 6, 8, 2. Click on the graph. And then we got negative 1, negative 4 as our vertex. So negative 1, 1, 2, 3, negative 4. And then we're going to use 1, 3, 5, 7. You see it's positive 1, so 1, 3, 5, 7 doesn't change. So right 1, up 1. Right 1, up 1, 2, 3. Left 1, up 1. Then 3. Then 3, 4, 5. And there we go. Now this one here has an equal bar, so the graph should be solid. 
and previously we saw that it was uh, shaded inside so our double shaded region is only the parts where they intersect twice or they intersect in their shaded regions which is going to be right there so my solution set is going to be any point inside of that those double parabolas intersecting um, but on this purple line until they cross at the solid and dash because those are not um, it's only solid and dash that's where the solution set is all right, and that's going to conclude the notes for graphing quadratic inequalities.